Thank you. Um, so that was first time performance, uh, toiling. Um, something I always wanted to do. Uh, for me, it fit perfectly in with the exhibition. I want to thank um, Annette for being patient with me and allowing me the uh, freedom to uh, kind of do it in a, a way I felt comfortable with, because uh, I didn't really let her know what I was going to do. It was a game time decision. Uh, so thank you, Annette. Um, also, thank you. Uh, also, this is a wonderful program, honored to be a part of it. Uh, when I moved here 13 years ago, and I shared this with Annette, um, I had uh, set a goal for myself. Uh, I was in the old building, and I was like, one day I would like to exhibit there. So um, I'm honored to be here now, especially um, as a part of the uh, Working Artist Project. Um, yeah, so that, that's it. Uh, I guess since you know, the performance uh, was added in, um, since it's still fresh in people's minds, I, you know, I'm willing to take some questions about that and I can proceed and talk about other things if you have any questions. This is called uh, ceiling. Ceiling? Um, yeah, I mean, you know me, Carl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, really with my work, um, I try to give uh, entry points, but one of the things as an artist I try not to do is um, dictate what people are supposed to get from it. Um, so, I mean, you have different artists, feel different ways, but as an artist, writer, whatever job you do, your work is everything that you put into it, all your thoughts, your energies. And so when you see the work, my intent is not to say, oh, this is what it is, this is what it is, or even lead you with saying this is what I was thinking about when I did it, but to open the door. So you see the piece. The title of it is Ceiling. Um, if you don't know what it is, uh, also on the label, it says it's glass, it's tempered glass. Um, my hope as an artist in thinking conceptually uh, and trying to keep a balance between aesthetics and concept, um, and sometimes that's very tricky, um, is that I've given you enough information to run with it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm quite sure I didn't answer your question, but yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Kevin. I guess I wasn't hoping anything. Quite honestly, um, once again, that's one of those things. I mean, some, I, I imagine some people were like, I will never get that time back. <laughs> yeah. And if that's how you feel, that my, my whole thought about making work is the artist is not there most of the time. So you're going to have to engage with it, um, with what's available and your own experience. And somewhere in between that, your experience and your knowledge. Um, for me, well, I will speak selfishly, um, and hopefully this answers your question, I wasn't thinking about the audience. This is something that I wanted to do. So this was about um, the title of the piece, Carl, Glass Ceiling. The glass ceiling has different meanings for different people. Um, but I think it affects all people. Sometimes we try to box it into 
oh, this person or that person or this circumstance, but um, really, I think everyone, whether there are barriers that have been set before you that other people put there or you put them there yourself, um, you have to break through. Uh, for me, you know, it's about accomplishment. It's about struggle. Um, in some ways, it's toward a point where it's just sitting there and it's nicely manicured. It's peaceful. Um, but at the same time, in order for a glass ceiling to be broken, there's also violence. There's uh, effort, labor, um, just a whole bunch of different things. I, I hope that kind of uh, answers that for you. Yes. Hey, how you doing? Well, I mean, one, can I do it for that long time? Um, for me, the idea of performance, and particularly in this piece, is, um, I mean, it's a lot about labor in the body, the body and the mind working in concert. I mean, I wasn't acting when I was doing that. I was working. I'm sweating now profusely. I mean. <laughs> Um, you know, so you know, the questions weren't so much about the performance from what was I doing, you know, what were people get, what would people get out of it. Um, it was really, you become in the moment. Um, the decision to keep going. You know, I know if I kept going, a lot of people probably would have been like, okay, I got this. Um, but it is about endurance. So I, you know, technically I could have kept going. I mean, this has different iterations. Maybe it comes into a big pow. Maybe, you know, it's just over and over and over again. Um, one of the things I had mentioned to Annette was, um, you know, I may just come in here unannounced and just do this. Um, for me, it's about you know, my life. Um, you know, throughout the course of life, things are easy, things are difficult. They go back and forth. You have to start over again. Sometimes it seems as if you're stopping, but in this, I never stopped. There was always some movement. There was always some action. Um, and so, you know, throughout the performance, you know, in my mind, generally with, as an artist, I, I visualize from beginning to end processes as well as completion, like what, what this is gonna look like. Um, but of course, as you're in it, there are things that happen. Um, and even, you know, my own, you know, yeah, I could have stopped at the first one, you know, because I, I was like, wow, how you know, much longer am I going to do this? Um, but it was important for me to go from beginning to end, to start over again, to get every angle of this. I mean, it, it really, from when we set this up and put it in here, I had Eric, oh, I didn't do that either, I'm sorry. Um, Hashim, yes. can you please stand? And it's Chris here. Chris, can you stand? So these are my wonderful apprentice. Um, and let me say, they are very talented in their own right. Um, but it was a pleasure having them work with me on this, um, being able to utilize their knowledge and expertise. Uh, they were very instrumental in getting this in here. There were four of us, Eric as well, uh, setting this up. And 
it wasn't easy, <laughs> you know, the four of us. So evening this out, um, it, I mean, the whole thing was labor, the thought of it, getting this here, acquiring it, I mean, uh, Irma, you know, all of that, I mean, literally played a part that mentally, physically uh, was challenging. Um, and my wife and kids are here, aren't here, I didn't get to thank them, but without their support, uh, tremendous. Yes. Yes. Um, most of it was broken prior to getting here. There were larger pieces that we ended up breaking as well, um, but it mostly came like this. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's something, I quite honestly, I, I, I thought about putting it back. Um, it would go back to the way it was. I gotta talk to Eric about that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Thank you, I'm sorry. Thank you, Robin and John. And can everybody say happy anniversary? <laughs> Enjoy, guys. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Carl. No, just, uh, I, I was curious about the decision to keep, to keep essentially the same and not morph it into some other shape or some other outcome. Yeah, I mean, so in my mind, I thought about different iterations that, you know, it can change. Um, but this form, it was important because everyone surrounded around it. I wanted to really engage and, um, you know, have this uh, intimacy as I was going around as well. I mean, I, I, I feel that as an artist, um, at least, I, I can't speak for every artist, but personally, um, the works, regardless of, at some point in time, they're autobiographical. And so, no, I wasn't in a character outside of Paul, Steve, and Benjamin. Um, and it was, you know, I didn't, in the process of doing it, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about anything else outside of this glass and moving it. Um, and so, I mean, that was what was most important. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was almost like a political statement sort of thing, or if it was just really the act of just what is work, what is toil. Um, I don't intentionally make political statements, um, <laughs> but I, understand if people see that in there. And I won't say you didn't see what you saw, I just won't say I said it. <laughs> yeah. so, um, were you thinking about the sound? Were I'm sorry, Daryl. Were you thinking about the sound of this as you were doing that, that was a very important part of it. Um, because in the process of laying this out, um, the sound was just so beautiful to me. It was this meditative process. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was probably the biggest aspect of this and what really led into, I just want that sound. And I, I thank everyone for your patience because I didn't hear anything, a couple of coughs and things, but you know. But it was like just beautiful for me to hear. I don't know what you got out of it. Um, and and as, if you were hearing that as well, but. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Yes. I would say indirectly, quite honestly, the, the, the chairs are there because you guys had to sit down somewhere. Um, so the thought more so was, okay, um, what's the best way to sit this, set this up because there's not a lot of room, you know, with the glass in the middle. But um, as I was toiling in the uh, piece, um, yeah, I did think about you know, I guess from college, my, my theater classes on blocking and stuff like that, you know, how do I engage people? But really, it also led into, I need to switch because my back is hurting. Um, so I don't know if that answers. Is the rear all seeing measure of these that doesn't involve the color black? How many other non black pieces? You say it doesn't involve the color black? You always say stuff like that, man. <laughs> you said that about my flag, too. What's that? <laughs> I was going back to the other exhibition. Um, I guess if you don't see black, but it's very black to me. I don't, I, I can't explain that to you. But it, it's, it's very black to me. I think, you know, you got the conversation of, you know, the piece that I had at the high, black is the color, but then you got scientists that say black isn't a color. give you too much information. I got on black socks, a black t-shirt, and black underwear, too. So. <laughs> and then, you know, my, my, my leg is black, brown, whatever. But, yeah. So everything, yeah. I'm sorry. You were, you were saying. Yeah, so um, what would you, seeing this kind of year, this is your first performance piece, what are some of I've performed many times, just not like this, yeah. Um, when you, I, I'm not trying to do these puns, but when you toil with an idea for a long time, and um, in some ways it becomes burdensome. Um, and so when you have the opportunity to remove that burden, um, unless you take advantage of the opportunity to do it, you're going to continue to be burdened. So in some ways, I had to do it. Or else, at least for me, my mind will play things over and over and over and over again until, you know, it's like, you know, I got glass in my house and my kids are sitting at the table and my wife and I'm, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be the same. This was like, the piece came to fruition, uh, something that I've been thinking about for a while. And so it was like I had to do it. Um, I don't know if that, Question, but yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, and um, potentially 
it may be sh viewed somewhere else. So. Yes. Hey. I'm sorry. I didn't hear Got it from a manufacturer, and they provide everything. Not everything they provide. I got the material. Yes. The name of this show is Pure Water. Yes. Talk about how you see this mm, clear slash white field of glass in context with these black box ceramics. So you want me to? talk about how it relates to pure black. So first of all, the title is Pure Black and it's named after a paint color. Pure Black is, I think, does it say bear paint color on that list? Can, are you able to see that? It's a bear pure black uh, from Home Depot. Um, and so, yeah, this goes back to, for me to Carl's question, whereas Visually, um, you might not see black, I see black when I look at this. Not just the little dark specks in it, um, but the process of, of doing it. I'm not colorblind or anything like that, but I see black when I look at this. But then, the idea of pure black is one of the things that came out in the process of making this paint. As a, as a white man, can I see the same black that you see here? I believe you can. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I think you can. I, you know, and I think that's an important question. Um, you know, how people, and that's really, you know, how I view the work is that the exact question that you answered in the, the, your approach in participating and understanding, that's the perfect beginning. Um, so back to her point, not No, that's you. I didn't, I didn't say anything. <laughs> You can say it about yourself. You're a critic, but you can you cannot tell me what I see. You can say that, but that doesn't mean then that's what I'm saying. That's you. Thank you. That's one aspect. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the reason why I say that is because I didn't, I didn't see that, but... You didn't see that? No. That's good. No. I'm just saying, like, for me, like, that's just an open question. So that means you don't think that's inevitable for me to even suggest that was a possibility? That what was a possibility? That this was, like, a, like in some way, it's like a form of competition, you know, for you. Mm. I played a lot of sports growing up and thought I was going to be a professional athlete. And I guess when I think about being an artist, you know, when people talk about competition, I'm competing mostly with myself. So if that's the competition you're speaking of, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I try to move myself forward every time I do something, when I read, I, you know, research, research, I'm, um, but I don't think in terms of competition. I don't think it was a competition, but I do think you won. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and my hair was probably brown, really, before it was gray, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a good point, and that actually, I think, is a good segue into these paintings. Um, each of these are um, black paintings, and, you know, I give you the titles and the type, um, but they're not all the same. Uh, this one right behind me, you may even say, is not black, when the light is hitting it, and um, it's in the middle of these, um, but the title says it's black. Anybody else? Yes. In what aspect? Give me an entry point or something. I said, give me an entry point. Right. You see hands and what? I see hands and cloths. And cloths. Okay. And I guess I'm just curious, you know, what kind of attention you have behind the piece or um, I'm sorry, can somebody can, excuse me, can you tell me what that title says? <laughs> God bless the martyrs. So the cloths are actual flags um, that were hand sewn by myself. Um, with intentional differences. Um, there are some that are, um, have this, as best, I, I, I wasn't trained as a, using a sewing machine, uh, but as best as I could make one of those, I did. Um, but the end result was not what was important to me. Once again, the labor, the process, the same thing when I'm doing these paintings. What you see are these black paintings, but for me, the labor of painting these out, it was a lot. It takes a lot of paint. It, I mean, it's really, once again, I hate to say it, so in some parts I uh, agree uh, with the paragraphs of conceptual art by Sol Lewitt, but then in other parts, uh, particularly when it comes to the aesthetics, I disagree. Um, and I think when you look at his works, that may not make sense either. But, um, you know, it was important for me to carry that through. I had a, I've been doing a series of flags um, for a long time. Um, and so it's something that will continue, the process of making these. Um, they've also become parts of performances as well, or installations. Anybody else? 